So we were talking about a reducer. We call it this connection. So what is the job of a reducer? This is a six inch pipe. This is a four inch pipe. Before this two flow can actually move from this pipe to this one, you need a fitting that is known as a reducer. If not, you won't be able to achieve. If you just merge this pipe together, then a lot of water is gonna flow out. You will lo you lose a lot of fluid, a lot of liquid from this larger one. Not everything is gonna enter into the smaller one. So you need that fitting, call a reducer. Okay. So, um, so you need a reducer. It can be concentric, it can be eccentric. Now, also, what will happen in terms of pressure? You she went to so what do you call that place? Is it shop? Something shop? Not shop, right? It's set, set, she mentioned one shop, something like that. No, no, no. She mentioned one shop. Pharmacist. It seems so. Right. Okay, so um, you, you need that reducer to actually do the job. Now, I was saying in terms of pressure, what will happen? You have a large area here. And automatically, that large area now reduces to a small area. What is going to happen in terms of pressure? At this point, pressure is, is going to increase. Pressure will increase. That means flow is going to be faster. Flow will be faster at this point here. Pressure is going to increase. It's just like, let's assume you have a narrow opening and you have 20 people who want to get into that small opening, into that uh, opening. When the, listen, opening is very small, 20 people want to get, get into it, there, there, there will be pressure. They are going to injure themselves. But when the open is large, there will be freedom of movement. People can easily walk into the place. So yeah, there will be pre the pressure will be higher compared to at this point here. Okay. So that is a, a reducer now. So the next one, the next uh, fitting is T, what we call T's. What are T's? These are used to make 90 degree branches from the main run of pipe. They are used to do what? To make 90 degrees branches from the main run of pipe. Straight T's as equal branch as the main pipe run. Okay, before I, I go to that one, you can have an equal T, you can have a reducing T. So what are situations where you have an equality and scenarios where you have a reducing T. So let me share a diagram with you. The diagram I've been sharing so far, let me go back to it. Okay, now looking at this point here, if you look at this point, what is happening is that this is uh, six inches. This is six inches. Well, this is uh, four inches. So 
What kind of tea do you need here? This is going to be a reducing tea. This is going to be a reducing tea. Although there's a mistake in this drawing, there's a little mistake, there's a little error. There's a little error. Sorry for that, actually. There's a little error. Okay, sorry, um, there's, there's no error, actually. There's no, let me explain what's gonna happen. We're not gonna use a reducing T. We're gonna use an equal T here. That will be, you have a six inch equal T. First and foremost, you introduce a T for first and foremost. So six inch will come here. Six inch will enter into the T and six inch is gonna come out of the T. So let me look for that diagram. Okay, so this is it. So to connect this two pipe, you bring a T. This is six inch, this is six inch. So this is gonna be a six inch equal T. So you have six inch coming here. You have six entering here. You have six exiting here. This is a stage now. This is four inch, the yellow pipe is four inch. So six inch cannot leave this T and enter into this pipe. So this is where you now introduce the reducer, the six by four inch reducer. So that will now reduce flow from six inch to four inch. So first of all, you introduce an equal T here. Then after that, you now introduce a reducer. So the drawing is okay, everything is perfectly done, okay. So you now introduce a reducer. Let me bring that diagram. Okay, let me... Okay, this is the diagram for the reducer. So you bring in a reducer. This is a T, this is a reducer now. So the reducer connects the six inch T to the four inch pipe. This is a six by four inch reducer. Okay. So um, the next uh, fitting is OLED, what they call OLED. OLED. What is the job of an OLED? An OLED is used in a scenario like now, we is in the previous picture, which I just shared. We saw a situation where we went from six inch to six inch. Okay. Or let me even look for an, another image. Let me share another image with you guys. Okay. This is another piping system.
Okay. Now let me explain what is happening here. This is this line here is 10 inch. You have a 10 inch pipe flowing vertically. And then they now decide to change flow in a horizontal direction. They brought a 10 inch elbow as well. Then after the 10 inch elbow, they attach a 10 inch pipe. A 10 inch pipe was attached to the 10 inch elbow. After the 10 inch elbow, a 10 inch um, T was connected to the 10 inch pipe. A 10 inch, a 10 inch uh, T was connected. This is a 10 inch T, equal T. This line is 10 inch. This line is 10 inch. The one after is 10 inch. This is the main run, it's 10 inch. The, this is, the diverter run is also 10 inch. Then you have a, a, another 10 inch elbow that changes flow at 90, still horizontal, but by 90. Then when they got here, you have a, you have a pipe, length of pipe here. When they got here, they now wanted to divert flow from the main run. This is the main run here, 10 inch by 90 in an horizontal direction. So what did they do? But the diversion was supposed to be eight inch. What did they do? They brought in a 10 by eight reducing T. This one is no longer an equal T anymore. This is now a reducing T now. This is a reducing T. A, a reducing T was now brought to divert flow by 90. This is eight inch line. This is 10 inch main run. So this is a 10 by eight reducing T. Good, this is a reducing T right now. Okay, then let me exhaust the, this, the shape. After the reducing T, along the main run, a pipe was attached to the T. After the pipe, they decided to um, reduce the length of pipe from 10 inch to 8 inch again. So they had to bring in a reducer. This is going to be a 10 by 8 inch reducer. 10 inch by 8 inch reducer. This is a, a, a reducer. Actually, this is a, a, an eccentric reducer here that was used. Okay. So, but now we're, before we diverted to this, we're talking about OLED. What is the job of an OLED? Yeah, you saw that there was a diversion from 10 inch to eight inch. And what was used was a 10 inch by eight inch reducing T. Let's assume that the diversion was going to one inch or two inch from 10 inch. You can see that the difference is actually much. You want to move from 10 inch to one inch, or you want to move from 10 inch to two inch. The difference from the main run of piping is actually so much. So normally you won't get that kind of tea in the market. If you are requesting for such a tea, it's gonna be on special order. And it, since it's gonna be on special order, it's gonna be expensive. So the tea is actually expensive to make a tea just for 10 inch to, from 10 inch run, divided to a one inch run, it's gonna be expensive. It's not really available in the market. So that is where the OLEDs are used. we we'll make use of OLEDs. When the diversion is from a very large diame diameter, very large pipe size to a small pipe size, very large line size to a small line size, you don't make use of T's anymore. What you're gonna use is OLEDs. And we have various kinds of OLEDs. You have um, weld OLEDs, you have um, sock OLEDs, you have tread OLEDs. You, it depends on how it's going to be attached to the main run of piping, the method of attachment. If it's going to be welded, you are going to use a weld OLED. A sock OLED is another type. You have a tread, a tread OLED, a tread OLED, a tread, just like a tread, like the cover of a, bo a plastic bottle which you turn, and it, it, you have a tread on the cap of the bottle. You have a tread also on the top of the bottle. Then when you put the cap, you turn and it enters. 
and it aligns with the bottle. So it's the method of attachment. You also have a succulent. So when you intend to divert flow from a very large size to a small line, you don't waste money ordering for a special reducing tea. What you're going to use at that point is a OLED, is an OLED. And like I said, that depending on how you want to attach, you can have a wet OLED, you can have a thread OLED, you can have a sock OLED. Okay. So, then there is something else called a cap. What's the use of a cap? A cap is used to seal the end of a pipe run. A cap is what? Used to seal the end of a pipe run. When a pipe comes to an end and it doesn't continue, you use a cap, you cap it off. Okay, you use a cap to cap it off. So let me look at, look at my drawings. I'm gonna show you from my drawing then. Okay, in this diagram over here, this was um actually a 10 inch line. This is a 10 inch line now. So they now introduce a succulent, an OLED. They wanted to attach a pipe, a line of one inch. So like I said that you can't get that kind of reducing tea readily in the market. It's gonna be by special order, but you can easily get an OLED. So a succulent was used here as a means of attachment. I want to try to enlarge it so you can easily see. There's a succulent here. A succulent was introduced. So before the after the circular was introduced, the pipe was not attached. Then there's an, this is a, this is a one inch pipe. There's a one inch elbow here, there's a one inch pipe again. Then at the end, a cap, we cap off this in the pipe, we seal up the, the, the pipe with the cap. The pipe, a cap here at the end. Okay? I hope that is understood. Okay? So, So next, flanges, we'll be looking at uh, flanges. We'll be looking at uh, flanges. What are flanges? If we go back, okay, to our, the, the one I just showed you just now. Now, we have what they call standard pipe sizes, length of pipe. When you buy a pipe, let's assume you are, you are, you are laying pipes all the way from Patako to Lagos. You are not gonna get one long pipe that you can lay from Patako to Lagos, even if the distance is gonna be straight. You have a, a standard length of pipe. When you exhaust, you have to join another one. 
So take for instance right now that you've exhausted one length of piping and you want to add, attach another length. Are you just going to bring the two piping together and merge them together? No, the answer is no. There has to be a connector, something that will connect both, both pipes. And that connector that is normally used is called a flange. Now take, this is in this image here, this is a pipe here. Let's assume that we have exhausted the length of pipe with this one. And we now brought another one, and this is another pipe. We now brought another one. We wanted to join both of them together. Before that, can, that could be done, you need to introduce a flange. So this is the flange here. You have flange on the left-hand side. You have flange on the right-hand side. Two flanges were, 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 were brought together so as to properly connect the, the two pipes together. And also, it doesn't end here. There's what they call a gasket that will be added so as to provide a tight seal and make sure that nothing escapes from this pipe. A, this thing will be added. A, this thing will be added. It's going to be added. A, what they call a gasket, which is a leak seal proof, will be added to this flange in between these two flanges so that no liquid, no gas can actually leak out of this system. So that, that is one thing a flange is used for, to connect two pipes together. Then also, apart from connecting two pipes, on this, um, still on this diagram here, this is a ball valve here. A ball valve was introduced into the pipeline to control flow. Now, before that, that ball valve is not just directly attached to the, um, to the pipe. It must be flanged on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. A flange is used to attach it to the side of the pipe. A flange is also used on this other end as well. Okay? Now, flange can be bolted. They can be welded. They can be bolt welded. They can be socket welded. So depending on the method of attachment, how the flange will be attached, to whatever is being attached. You can have a welded flange. You can have a bolted flange as well. And usage also dec decides how they are going to be used, how they're going to be used. Like now, let's assume that the, this line now is something that will require regular maintenance. You can't come and uh, weld this thing together because if you weld, when you, you want to maintain, that means you have to dismantle destroy what you've welded. But if you bolt this thing together, what you want to maintain is just for you to uh, unlock your bolt, open it up and you carry out your maintenance activities. Okay? So another place also where this, um, where this uh, flange is used is when you are connecting a pipe to a vessel at the nozzle, you are also going to use flange. The nozzle has its own flange. So you are going to, bring another flange to connect the, before you attach the pipe, you must bring another flange to connect to the nozzle before you, you attach, the, you are going to attach the, this, the pipe. So let me look at a previous, um, okay, like this one now. In this instance here, look at, this is, this green tank has this nozzle. Then this pipe is there. Before you can attach this pipe to this green tank, you must attach a flange first. First of all, you will, after attaching the flange to this nozzle, this is the, the flange, the nozzle has its own flange. So you attach another flange. Then you now connect the pipe to the flange you've attached. The same thing over here. The same thing on the, on, on the other drawing. So let me actually look at uh, this thing. Okay, in this one over here, 
In this diagram, in this diagram, we actually have um, we actually have the um, flange now. The flange has been brought. You can see a blue flange attached to the green flange of the nozzle. Then connection is now complete. The pipe now connects to the flange over here. This is the blue flange. This is the green flange of the nozzle. So the blue flange connects to the green flange of the nozzle. And then the pipe is now attached to the, to the flange. Over here, the same thing happens. We have um, the purple flange of the nozzle of the tank connects to the blue flange that is brought here. Then the pipe is now connected to the blue flange. Okay. Then on this one, the same thing happens. You have um, the yellow flange of the nozzle connected to, to the yellow flange that's been brought. And the pipe is now connected to the flange. So that is actually the job of a, a flange. So the last fitting we are, we we're looking at is um, what they call um, valves. We're looking at valves. What are valves? What are valves? Valves are used to either start flow. Okay, I think I should end here. Yeah, let me not go into valves. Let me not, not go into valves. Let me stop here. If you have any question, let me get your questions. So please, um, any question, ask your question. Ask your question, please. Ask your question, please. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Hello. Hello, I'm uh, here. You said, some, you said something earlier about the nominal piping uh, size. Okay. But you never expected on it. Okay. I said that uh, if you hear the word, because to sorry, what led to to that what led to that was that you said that a 10 inch pipe mm. that it doesn't is not the diameter is not the inner diameter or the outer diameter that determines the um the size of a pipe like let's say a 10 inch pipe is not okay. that 10 I inch is well. the inner or the outer diameter is okay. 10 inch you said nominal uh pipe size that determines uh -huh. it so please could you expand exp uh, could you okay. Shed, share more? Okay, I'm going. I'm, I'm going to do it. I, I, I remember very well. I said it. I said that the fact when they said ten inch pipe, it doesn't necessarily mean that the outer diameter of that pipe is ten inch or the inner diameter of that pipe is ten inch. What is going to be that? Is going to the outer diameter is going to revolve around ten inch. It's going to revolve around 10 inch, 10 inch point something, 9 inch point something, as in the in outer might be 10 inch point something, Why the out uh, the inner might be 9 inch point something. You understand? So let me actually show you there is an app I have here, which I, I will use to actually explain that your question. Okay. Okay, they don't, I'm not allowed to. Assess that. Okay, let me try when I can assess it from here.
Okay. Okay, I, I, I believe you can see this um, stuff here. This is schedule 10 pipe information. This is a 10 inch pipe information. I believe you can see it. Hello? Yes, I can see it. Uh -huh. I can see it. Look at outside diameter is what? 10.75. Outside diameter, 10.75. Inside diameter, 10.42. But it is a 10 inch schedule 10 pipe this is the dimension for a 10 inch pipe for schedule 10 so that's a 10 inch is just a way a reference that they can't you, you know that they, if they tell you 10.75 inches a pipe it will sound cumbersome okay. it will, it's going to sound cumbersome but they just like, like approximate it to a 10 inch pipe Okay. 10 inch pipe, easy. 10 inch pipe, easy. But standardly, they know that 10 inch pipe, all 10 inch pipe, irrespective of the schedule, is going to have an outside diameter of 10.75. Is the inside diameter that will vary? Is the inside okay. diameter that, that will vary? You understand? So okay. let me even change the schedule. This one is schedule 10. Let me change the schedule to 20. So the outside diameter is 10.75. It's still for schedule 20 now, it's still the same thing, but the inside diameter has changed. Okay. Okay, let me increase the schedule again. You see that is actually the inside diameter is decreasing. Let me increase it to schedule 100. It has decreased further. So the thickness, wall thickness is increasing, but the outside diameter is still the same thing. But this is a 10 inch pipe. Okay. So, 10 inch pipe, suddenly the outside diameter is 10.75 inches, but they can't use a 10.75. It, it will be easy for you to memorize and store that in your head, okay. but easily you can store 10 inch pipe. I'm looking for 10 inch pipe. Already, suddenly they know the outside diameter of 10 inch pipe is 10.75. Then, depending on okay. the schedule, the schedule can be, can, it will now alter the inside diameter. So, I, I hope you, you understand. Yes, perfect. I hope you understand. Yeah, okay. perfectly. Thank you. Okay, any other question? Any other question? Any other question? Any other question? None from me. Eh? I said none from none. me. Okay, not from you. Okay. Yes. Okay, so we are still going to be running some other courses, uh, 
some other trainings along the line as you've um, viewed from here okay so we thank you those of you who were able to make it this evening we appreciate your being here with, with us it's a pleasure having you to the very end and i will trust much as well if i can upload the video so for you to still connect so you can if you have any anything you want to say you can say it before we i time it's over i i just want to say i just want to appreciate you because i know for you to take out time out of your schedule to you know do this training you know not a, it's not like you're expecting anything from us in fact we are we are so grateful we're so grateful thank you so much god will continue to bless you amen Amen. Amen. Okay, I will just quickly connect and say one or two things. When it's um, just help us and publicize it. This is our meeting. Yep. There. Would you? I think I'm meeting you for the first time. Would you? Would you? Would you? Would you? Would you? 